Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is my last major book haul. So because I took a bit of an extended break here on booktube, I was still purchasing books but I wasn't doing like regular book hauls or anything like that. So I have this huge mountainous stack of books that I've hauled or I've been in the process of hauling since coming back to booktube. So basically I've been doing chunks at a time and I'm going to do the final chunk and then I'm all caught up, all my books will have been hauled. I'm so excited so let's get into it. So we're gonna start off with the non-spooky books because a lot of these books are going to be spooky because they are the most recent. Hi! So they're the ones that I was getting at the end of summer as well as leading into now. So most of them are spooky but a few of them aren't. So the non-spooky ones are Mother Tongue, my Family's Grove Trotting Quest to Dream in Mandarin, Laugh in Arabic, and Sing in Spanish. It is a memoir, and it is by Christine Gilbert. So I normally don't read any sort of memoir, autobiography, biography, nothing like that, because I just, I'm not very interested in them typically. However, I, I saw this during a book event, and I thought I would, I would give it a try, because if you don't know, I love learning languages as well. I actually have another YouTube channel where I talk all about language learning. Um, so this just, it intrigued me, especially because I have studied Mandarin. I studied it in high school. I've also studied Arabic. I initially was an Arabic major in college and I have taken Spanish basically my entire life. So I am familiar with each of these languages and so I was very interested about her family's approach to these languages. Next up is volume 9 of Spy X Family. I, oh and this is by Tatsuya Endo. This is a very good manga but I have also been loving the anime as well. Um, I've just been purchasing the manga slowly and reading them as I purchase them and then watching the show after I read them. So I just got volume 9. And then I got The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. So I loved Practice Makes Perfect and When in Rome by Sarah Adams. So I know that I like the writing of this author, but actually my partner was like, I want to read one of your romance books. I want to know what it is that you're reading and that you enjoy so much. And my partner also really loves American football. So we chose this book together as an American football read, basically, and we are going to buddy read this. I I have the audiobook version of it, and so he can read the physical version, but I, I'm so intrigued because I know I love this author, and I'm also just like a little nervous because my partner does not read romance. He is definitely a like high fantasy sci-fi magical realism kind of reader, so yeah. I'm, ex I'm excited, but I'm also nervous. <laughs> now this next thing is not actually a book, but it's inspired by a book, and that is the Tea Dragon Society card game. So I love the Tea Dragon Society books. I absolutely adore them. So when I saw that there was a card game, because we play a lot of board games and card games in my family, I thought this is perfect, it's just as cute, I need this, so. I cannot wait to bust this open and make my partner play it with me. I'm so excited. Like, just the cards look like they're going to be so cute and so much fun. Ah! Also, I'm sorry if it sounds like I am sick. My allergies have been kicking my butt this fall. Um, even though I have allergy meds and I've been taking them, I still, like, I'm still a little stuffy. <laughs> the next stack. We have The Girl With No Reflection, and this is by Kesha Chow, and this is like a Chinese fantasy of this girl who's going to go and marry this prince, except every girl who's tried to marry this prince, like, disappears mysteriously right before the wedding, so she doesn't want to disappear, and so we are going to find out what happens to those girls and hope that it doesn't happen to our main character. Then I finally got my hands on a copy of Book of Night by Holly Black. 
I'm a big fan of Holly Black. I read this book. I just hadn't purchased it yet, but now I've got myself a copy. I also got The Rule Book, also by Sarah Adams. I believe this is like the companion or the second book after The Cheat Sheet, but it's another American football romance by this author, so I, I wanted to get this one as well. It just, it just made sense, okay? Next up, I got Champion of Fate by Kendare Blake. I read the quartet series by Kendare Blake. I'm completely forgetting what the quartet is called, but I loved those books and I really want to purchase them and have them on my shelves, but I just, I haven't invested in that series yet. Um, but I really want to, so I thought, hey, Champion of Fate, oh, Three Dark Crowns, author of, Kendare Blake is the author of the Three Dark Crowns quartet, which I loved. And so I thought that I would really love this book by them too. I don't really remember what it's about, but if it's a similar fantasy world vibe as Three Dark Crowns, I know I'm gonna love it and now I can have it on my shelf. The last non-spooky-esque book that I have for this book haul is The Night Ends With Fire by KX Song. Let me tell you, this book is gorgeous. It is, I mean, the outside isn't, but like, the sprayed edges and the uncovers are just absolutely beautiful. And so this is an adult fantasy with influences from Mulan, but if it was, I think, more time period accurate or um, with themes of the wuxia principles or something, I don't know. I'm just really excited because it's a adult fantasy based on Mulan, so I'm here for it. Now on to the spooky book. I also got Infin Infinity Alchemist by Kaysen Callender. This just, it seems like spooky, but not like specifically spooky. Like it's alchemy, it's magic. And I just read The Scarlet Alchemist and I loved that. So I'm like, hey, I'm in a little bit of an alchemy mood. I'll go for this. So I'm going to give this a try. And it's also kind of dark academia-esque because it takes place at the school for alchemy. So... That's why I'm like, it's kind of spooky because it's kind of dark academia at the school, but alchemy magic, you know. And then this one was a little bit of a cover buy, I'll be honest. Um, and that is Gothicana, and this is by Runix. So it is a dark romance, but it's also dark academia. And now are there a couple of tropes in here that I'm like, maybe look up the trigger warnings, but also are ones that I'm not super familiar with and I'm, I'm not necessarily the most excited about it. But I am going to give it a try because it is dark academia and it is dark fan dark romance. I haven't read a lot of it, but I really want to. So I am going to give this a try. And again, so many of these books have beautiful end covers. Like, I'm just buying them at Barnes & Noble, and they're not even the Barnes & Noble editions, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. Next up for a lighter spooky read is Magic, Lies, and Deadly Pies, and this is by Nisha Pop. This is about a woman who accidentally kills someone with a pie or a pastry, and now it's kind of become her thing. Like, she sees these terrible people on the street in her town or she hears it from other people and so she decides to serve up justice herself in her baked goods. So I think this is just going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Moving on, I have the September House and this is by Carissa Orlando. This I want to read very soon. It sounds very much like your basic classic haunted house story and I love haunted house stories like I, they are some of my favorite thriller and horror films and so I want to read more books that are haunted house because I love those so that's really the only reason I picked this up is for the haunted house the September house it's gonna be so autumnal and just absolutely perfect for the season I also got mother daughter murder night and this is by Nina Simone and this I I don't know if I heard that it was like Gilmore Girls but make it murder, but it's basically where you have a grandmother, a mother, and the daughter. The daughter stumbles across a body. They're like going camping or something somewhere else. And she stumbles across a body and the police think she did it. So the grandmother and the mother set out to prove her innocence. So very much like familial bonding through murder investigations. 
I have also got Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, and this is by Benjamin Stevenson. I actually have read this book, however, I read it at a time where I just wasn't, I was in a bit of a reading slump, so I didn't retain really anything that happened. Like, you ask me what this is about, and the only thing I know about it is literally what the title tells me. So I am probably going to reread this because I really don't think I read it the first time I was reading it. Like I just wasn't retaining it. So I picked this up and I'm going to try and reread it. The next book that I got was actually the book club pick for the bookstore that I was at, which is a local bookstore at, around my new house. So I really just wanted to pick up the book club book and read it and see if I wanted to join the book club. I'm really excited. And that is Only the Guilty Survive. And this is by Kate Roberts. I mean, it's a really pretty cover. It's a thriller and it's not that long. So I, it's a light investment into this book club. I don't really know much about it. But this does deal with a mass suicide by a cult. There was one survivor and now somebody else is going and investigating what happened with this cult all those years ago and what was up with the whole mass suicide thing. So it's a little bit different of a book for me, but I, I'm intrigued. Continuing on with our spooky books, we have Our Hideous Progeny and this is by C.E. McGill. This is basically like if you take Frankenstein, yes, the great niece of Victor Frankenstein, it follows her. So she knows kind of what happened with her great uncle and we're still very much in Victorian London with science, dark sciences being on the rise and what everybody's invested in. And so it's kind of her take on what her great uncle Victor Frankenstein was trying to do with his monster. So I'm curious to see what she does. I also have a botanical daughter. This is by Noah Medlock. This one is another kind of like, it's not Frankenstein, but it is very much like these botanical scientists uh, want to create a family and they do so using plants and science and they create a daughter. So I'm sure that goes wrong. They deal in exotic plants. Like, this is this is gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a very unique atmospheric read for this fall spooky season. Got one more dark academia book to talk about. I have seen this one being talked about quite a bit recently, but I actually purchased it before I heard anything about it. And that is An Academy for Liars, and this is by Alexis Henderson. I read uh, House of Hunger by this author and I really enjoyed it and so I'm very excited to see what this author does with a like thicker dark academia. So our main character has some sort of like power of persuasion and like convincing people to do stuff and so she goes to this dark this academic school where everybody has powers like that so it also has such a very dark academia cover and I am still in my dark academia era, era even though I was like completely in it last year. I'm still loving the subgenre so I had to keep going with it obviously. Then, and then, <laughs> I did something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time and I went a little crazy a couple months ago and I got almost all of Riley Sager's books. So I purchased one Riley Sager book earlier on, like a year or two ago, but I knew I wanted to get all of them because I wanted to read all of Riley Sager's books from earliest published to, to now. And so I got all of them except for um, obviously the one I already had and the most recent one because these are all uh, paperbacks. And so the most recent one is not in paperback yet. So I wanted to wait. But otherwise, I got the rest of them. So that is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. The only one left. The House Across the Lake. Survive the Night. Lock Every Door. And Final Girls by Riley Sager. So I have Home Before Dark already. So all I need is the most recent one, which is only in hardback. So now I can start my Riley Sager little readathon almost <laughs> thing. I. I hope I can do it this year, but honestly, just with school and everything, I'm really kind of busy. 
So it might be a next year thing or it might be like a, a summer ween type thing or even in winter. I love to read a lot of thrillers in winter as well. So I don't think it'll be necessarily a spooky season read along or readathon, but it'll it'll happen, okay? I'm prepared it will happen. I got The 13th Child by Erin A. Craig because this is Erin A. Craig's newest release. I have loved House of Salt and Sorrows, House of Roots and Ruin, so I really wanted to get The 13th Child. It is like a continuation of the family from the first two books, so definitely read those. It is like your 12 Dancing Princesses, very twisted, dark retelling, so I'm just, I'm so excited to read this. And again, it's a beautiful cover, gold sprayed edges, like absolutely gorgeous inside and out. And I cannot wait to read this and just get so spooked out. Now, these final few books are actually going to be featured in an upcoming vlog that I am starting to do now. So I'm going to go through them very quickly, but I will talk about them a lot more in that vlog, which will go up after this. Um, so they're all kind of along the same vein of like cutesy spooky you know like the adult romance with like witches or vampires or werewolves just basically like that because i wanted to start my spooky season off like that still in a cozy autumnal vibe as well as spooky especially since today it's about to rain it's so dark outside oh my gosh anyway so I finally caved and I got the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I had seen a lot about this. It is by Sangu Mandana and I wasn't going to get it. I wasn't going to get it. But then I just read the synopsis and I was like, you know what? This actually sounds interesting. It actually sounds like a book I would enjoy. So I got over myself and I'm going to read it. I'm trying to ignore the hype but I am going to read this. And then I got, I don't know why I'm so excited for this one, uh, Looking for Love in All the Haunted Places by Claire Kahn. This is about a woman who works in paranormal activity and I don't know if she has some special gift with it or if she's just really good at it. And so she goes to this haunted house where there's this grumpy guy who doesn't believe in it. And I think it's like a TV show kind of thing. And they're trying to expose the paranormal activity there. So it is like adult romance, plus haunted house. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit like, why is this cover so purple? You know, it's not a spooky autumnal cover, but also like, I guess it kind of is. Purple can be considered a Halloween color. To me, not really, but whatever. It's a haunted house. I'm, I'm excited for it. Along the same lines of a purple spooky romance book, I have Casket Case, and this is by Lauren Evans, and this is about a woman who she, go, it's very much goes back to her small town that she was like done with and over with. She goes back and she starts working for her family's casket business, and then she, of course, meets this guy, and apparently he literally works for death. Like, he is the logistics coordinator for death. And it's just that he works for death. It's like he has such an office job for death. And it's their romance. It gives me a little bit of like um, dead romantics vibes, but I didn't like that book very much. So I'm hoping that this will be better. And then the final, final book. It's not actually a spooky book, but I got it at the same time as these spooky romances. And it is Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice by Katie Sicatelli Cook. I'm sorry. Look look at that author name. I'm so sorry. And this is just your pumpkin spice latte rivalry, basically. You have a small coffee shop owner who cannot stand pumpkin spice lattes. You know, she is not on that train. Her small town, of course, is very much like fans of pumpkin spice. And she's like, no, we don't do that here. And she is working at this local coffee shop. But then this huge coffee train chain moves in close by and it's competition and they are the ones who started the pumpkin spice latte so hmm, yeah it's it's very much like rivals to lovers chain versus small shop and it's all about pumpkin spice lattes so i had to plus look at how autumnal the cover is i needed to buy something with an autumnal cover those are all the books i'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background just destroying the paper bag he just loves to do that but those are all the books I've finally officially caught up with every single book I've purchased. 
basically in the past year because that is how long not only it's been that I've made booktube videos but also just how long it's been since I've done book hauls. So I had so many books to catch up with and I'm officially all caught up and done. I don't need to do another major book haul like this for quite a while. So my book hauls will probably be smaller and in vlogs rather than a giant video like this because I only buy like one to two books a month because of my book budget. So this, it'll either be a long time before this happens again or they'll just be in other little vlog videos that I do. So you are such a destructive cat. Oh my word. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you liked this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Comment down below some of the books that you are most excited to read this coming October and November, whether they are cozy autumnal books or spooky season books for October. I would love to hear what you guys are reading. And if you want to keep up with what I am reading, I have bookish social media linked down below. So you can follow me like on my Instagram, TikTok, things like that. And my Goodreads to know what I'm reading and what I think about them. Right now, I am currently reading Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson, and I am loving it. I'm about halfway through, and yeah. So if you like this kind of bookish content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified as I post at least one video a week. When it becomes autumn, it gets a little bit easier to think of more autumnal video ideas, so I might try and do two videos a week. But I also don't want to like overcommit or push myself, so just hit the bell to be notified so that you don't miss when a new video is uploaded. Thank you all again, and until I see you in the next video, I wish you happy reading!